Raul Castano Martinez. Where is he? Ah, there. Okay. Come on. And he will clarify how CPAS is turning our business communication inside out. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm already. You're already right. Right. Yeah, thank you. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for staying for this, uh, for this talk. Um, the title that I chose for this conversation with you is based on how um, CPAS is turning business communications inside out. That's actually the title of a report that I published um, in December, so about half a year ago. And I, I'm also incorporating some uh, more recent uh, slides that have some uh, information from other uh, reports. And, and also from some of the surveys that uh, we've been doing since then. Um, basically, um, the focus that um, I have at 451 Research, we're an, an analyst firm. Um, I work within the workforce productivity and, and collaboration channel. And our, our focus is very much um, understanding how work is changing. Uh, within that, um, I focus uh, strongly on, on uh, business communications, and for the last uh, five or six years, uh, CPAS has, has been increasingly um, a, a big part of my research. So some of the topics that I'd like to share with you, and like I said, there are bits and pieces of different reports that I've done in the last six years or so. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how we see the, the new um, connected workforce. Um, a concept that we've been playing with and, and would love to hear your comments about it um, that we refer to as uh, the Agile Enterprise and how this impacts the, the future of work. There's another concept that we've been looking at which we call the, the New Work Platform. It's more um, theoretical framework for understanding where business applications are going, and, and interestingly, APIs are at the, at the center of this. And then I'd like to close with some thoughts uh, regarding CPAS and uh, what we uh, call software-defined business communications. Um, so to begin with, uh, I, I have this slide mainly as, as a reference. I, uh, I don't intend to give you a, a history lesson, so don't worry about that. Um, when I started looking at, uh, at, at CPAS, that was uh, about six years ago. Um, I was part of the Yankee Group. It's another analyst firm that was acquired by 451 Research. And our focus was uh, mainly on uh, enterprise mobility. So we were some of the analysts that were looking at uh, technologies like uh, mobile device management, mobile application development. Uh, mobile application management, and then we looked at the impact that this had for uh, enterprise uh, productivity. So productivity has been a big part of, of our research uh, from the beginning. And about four years ago, we um, realized that mobility was kind of stagnated on one hand. Um, all the hype that we had seen uh, from the beginning, and I'm going back maybe uh, 10, 10 years ago, if we think about uh, when the iPhone uh, first uh, came out, all the promises that uh, mobile devices could change how we work, how um, we plan and execute work and productivity gains, they were not really getting to uh, the level of hype that, that was created around it. Um, now, interestingly, uh, uh, around that time is when we see the uh, emergence of companies like, like uh, Twilio and, and Nexmo. So from our perspective, we, we, uh, we've been following um, CPAS vendors mainly initially um, as a tool for, uh, tools for developers. That, that's how we, we looked at it. Now, our um, relationship with these vendors has, has evolved since then. And I could say particularly um, around 2016, uh, which is when uh, Nexmo uh, was acquired, then you have uh, the, the Twilio IPO and so on. Um, but mainly what we started noticing was the impact that these vendors were having within the larger uh, context of, of uh, business uh, communications. Um, so let, let me share with you so, some ideas. 
Um, we uh, published a report last year that, that we called Second Wave Mobility. That's, that's what analysts do. We look for uh, fancy titles, but basically building on some trends that we noticed were uh, really having an impact in terms of um, how mobile devices can uh, change how people are working. And as a vehicle uh, for how business uh, communications and from a larger perspective, um, APIs were changing uh, the nature of organizations and, and work itself. So some topics that started uh, and of uh, em emerging, what we call uh, mobile native capabilities, and I have a slide for this uh, that, that I will uh, explain in detail. Distributed work environments. Um, in our discussions with um, uh, uh, organizations, we started noticing there was a demand for technology that could be able to address their uh, um, communications, collaboration requirements of uh, workers that could be anywhere accessing from a, any device, different networks. And interestingly, this not only included knowledge workers, which have been the, the typical um, target audience for communications and collaborations, but, but more and more, we started hearing about the gig economy workers with a different set of requirements. And frontline workers also, if you think about the, the requirements that workers in a, in a factory may have in the line of production or uh, in a retail environment. And um, they, they're very different use cases, but at the same time, the challenges that, that the nature of, of these workers have, they translate also to the, uh, to the mobile um, knowledge workers. So that has been a, a topic of, of, our, of our research for the last uh, two or three years, I, I'd say. Um, so we started uh, playing around a little bit with some concepts. One of them we call the liquid enterprise, and I sometimes refer to this also as a programmable um, enterprise, meaning more and more we're seeing that uh, work is changing in a way that on one hand, there is um, increased demand for uh, a, a bigger output in an exponential way, meaning each uh, individual worker is required to produce whatever that output may be defined exponentially more than in, in, in previous years. Uh, and this is basically a, a reflection of the same pressures that all organizations are facing right now. When you talk to CIOs, CEOs, they're always talking about their ability to deliver in an agile manner. They're always pressed for time. They're always uh, talking about the constraints in terms of executing and delivering uh, to compete or to, to meet the, the demands of, of, of their customers. Another concept that, that we came up with that makes, makes sense to us is work ops, which we use to define the new way of working. It's very, very uh, clearly borrowing from DevOps. And this is a concept that we've been uh, looking at because um, from one perspective, um, we believe that the way um, software development and software-centric companies are changing and transforming um, digital organizations, uh, we believe there's some interesting things we can learn that are applicable across the entire company and to different companies, even if they are not software development companies. So, so we're seeing some really interesting um, uh, applications of this methodology um, in manufacturing, uh, for example, um, even in, in, in retail. Um, so those are some of the topics that I'd like to share with you. Now, mobility. Um, when we um, uh, started noticing that uh, stagnation in terms of the productivity that you could have from, uh, from mobility, a lot of the hype was really based on, on, on mobile um, devices and what knowledge workers could do with them. So as, as uh, all of you uh, know, the form factor is very limited in terms of what you can uh, produce. However, we believe that we are now getting to another stage 
where a lot of the hype that we heard initially from enterprise mobility and then a little bit later on with the chatbot over hype that was really uh, all over the place about three years ago. Uh, we believe this kind of comes in waves and the waves build on each other. So we believe we're now getting to, to a point where we will actually see some really interesting productivity gains, uh, where mobility will be very uh, uh, distinctive. Um, this um, chart that you see is from a survey that we just completed last week. So I, I, and I, and I noticed there's a mistake there, so I apologize for that. Uh, the, the two, the second and third line read uh, laptop. One, one should be laptop, the other one desktop. Uh, but the point that I wanted to make with this slide is, um, like I said, this is just from a, from a survey that was, that was done this month. Um, uh, we're seeing increased relevance for mobile devices and specifically smartphones um, in terms of how employees are getting work done. So from this uh, survey, 80% um, of the respondents um, say they use their smartphone on a daily basis several times a day, even more than laptop or desktop. Now, obviously, um, you might be wondering, well, what, what are they using it for? Uh, typically, uh, the, the four uh, top applications that they will talk about will be the core productivity apps. So that is uh, email messaging, and that includes SMS and, and over-the-top messaging uh, applications, voice calls, and, uh, and calendar. We believe that's changing, however. Uh, there's some interesting uh, developments. Uh, where we see the, the, uh, that smartphones will actually be more and more incorporated into the day-to-day -day workflows, and that includes not just knowledge workers, but service workers and, and task workers. So we do believe we're at the edge of a big change, a, a significant uh, shift in terms of how organizations organize, plan, and, and execute work. Um, we also believe that there's some growing pains there. Um, also from the same survey, uh, the impact that uh, organizations believe uh, smartphones can have on productivity, this is significantly different to what we saw maybe four years ago. Um, so from the survey, about 45% um, uh, one of those lines, uh, the, the light blue represents IT decision makers, whereas the other one uh, represents uh, employees, typically knowledge workers. Almost half believe that uh, smartphones are essential for the day-to-day -day work they do, and that they gain up to six hours or even more in terms of productivity gains. About four years ago, asking the same question, we used to get about uh, 20, 20%. So there's, there's that interesting change in perception. Now this slide is titled the, the Future of Work, but it's really more uh, present day. This is from another survey that was completed last year, uh, and it's from our Digital Transformation Survey. And this is where we see the growing pains in terms of transitioning from our current way of working to a new way of working. So not uh, all employees are feeling very um, optimistic right now about the tools they have. So uh, only 40% feel very productive, whereas most employees feel they are um, uh, stagnated because of uh, different uh, factors, including the uh, technologies that they work with. Um, interestingly, a lot of them uh, complain about spending too much time on, on email and I am, and uh, only one third uh, say they are satisfied with the applications they have. So we believe this actually is a transition stage and that this is uh, evolving um, into a, a different uh, way of seeing, uh, planning, executing um, and uh, work. Uh, part of this is how we see business communication communications changing, uh, we believe that we're uh, right now going into a different stage um, that is actually completely the opposite of where we were uh, 20 years ago. 
and, and uh, very much influenced by APIs and, and, and CPAS uh, specifically. So what does this mean? Um, this is another theoretical framework that we um, developed looking at what were the key requirements that we see of the uh, business communications uh, platforms that could fit this new way of working of the future. And there are four attributes that we identify. One is the ubiquity, meaning it should be uh, providing the collaboration uh, and communication, addressing those requirements for workers regardless of their location. And that includes um, uh, mobile workers, knowledge uh, workers that are travel warriors, for example, uh, frontline workers, uh, we believe it's a workflow defined, which means that the communications are no longer an afterthought or uh, overlaid uh, with other technologies for, for, um, for workers, but rather they are an intrinsic part of how you do um, your work, how you collaborate with other employees, how you interact with, uh, with your clients and even um, applications, business applications. Um, and that there are two other components that we believe are evolving, um, and that is um, in the intelligent component, cognitive capabilities that help workers uh, in terms of the planning and execution of the work, and then security, which we believe is still a big opportunity, in many cases a question mark. Um, so we see, for example, some uh, deployments where um, we believe that, that security is still a work in progress, and I'll just throw you some examples uh, at the, the Google Cloud Next. Um, yeah, it was Google Cloud Next. Uh, they, um, they announced um, integration of Google Assistant with Calendar, uh, and that just leaves open so many uh, possibilities for, for uh, security breaches. Um, I did notice that they limit the, the talk they have for integration just, just to calendar, but that is just uh, one example, and, and I'm not necessarily uh, bashing uh, on Google. Uh, there's uh, many, many similar examples. Um, so I, I mentioned the, the new work platform, uh, which is basically not so much a new category, and um, analysts love to talk about categories. This is not the case. We see work platform as a a destination where business applications are gravitating to, and there are plenty of different categories that are moving in that direction. Uh, so one example is uh, Slack. Um, they are positioning themselves as a workflow hub around which other enterprise, on enterprises' uh, applications um, gravitate, and, and obviously that has been a, a key factor for their success. It's all. Um, a API based uh, integration. Another vendor uh, from a different angle is Smartsheet, and I could add to that also companies like, uh, like Dropbox. So they're all talking about being this work platform, the place where work gets done. Um, I think that it all boils down to um, API integration uh, workflows and then the other two factors that, that we talked about, which are uh, security and, and the AI component. So what does this mean for, for business communications? Um, this is an analysis that we did to try to map out where different vendors are, are located where the uh, larger uh, orange circle could be how we define software-defined business communications. And you can see that it cut cuts across the different levels of vendors, knowledge workers, task workers, service workers, uh, but it also cuts across the employee and, and customer engagement interaction, where typically we either talk about uh, unified communications for employees or the contact center just for the customer uh, interactions. You also have team collaboration platforms like uh, Slack or Microsoft Teams trying to um, cover the, um, the entire uh, circle. Right now they're mainly focused on, on knowledge workers, but like I said, this is a theoretical <coughs> framework that we use to analyze vendors. I could say that there are some that are probably closer to covering the, the entire space, and 
if I were to mention some, I, I could probably look for someone like, like Bonash or Al Al Alcatel uh, Lucent Enterprise, because mainly they have the CPAS component, which is what we see at the heart of this. Now, um, I could point out that the discrete applications like uh, contact center and, and unified communications, there's a lot of white space there. Those are really interesting opportunities. We're seeing some point solutions emerging there. Um, um, and interestingly, the glue that holds everything together from our perspective is CPAS. Um, so I need to get to the, to the end of, of my uh, presentation before we go to the panel. Um, but basically, the message that I wanted to share with you, we believe there, uh, there is a new uh, emerging uh, way of working um, that is very much um, influenced by um, API, the API economy. Um, we believe that telcos will play a, a big role in there, and that's the topic of, of our, our next panel. So uh, with that, I hope that that was useful, and I'll be sharing this presentation with you. Thank you, Raul. <laughs>